We do have Hurricane Edward. That's the one in the Atlantic. That's the fourth hurricane in the tropical Atlantic. The one we're watching, this is a big one, and it's bad. It is now moving north northwest at 17 miles per hour. It's heading right there towards Cabo San Lucas. Already very heavy rain, strong winds, storm surge is impacting this area. And it's forecast to continue moving to the north northwest right along the coast of Baja California. It's a major hurricane. See the, the waves just started crashing over. You can't even see the arc anymore. It's covered in just a gray mist. The waves are about 20 feet right now, 20 feet high, 15, 20. It looks like it's just starting, and it's only going to get worse. Making us go inside. It's really coming in. This will get on like three hours or something like this before it really hits. It's pretty damn intense. We're in our hotel room and uh, we're actually packing now just in case there's an evacuation or something like that. And it sounds like Two freight trains are coming through both sides of this window and our front door, so it's been actually a little freaky right now. But uh, they say we have the the um, hardest part of the storm isn't going to be here for another hour or so. So yeah, here we go. Well, it looks like the hurricane is finally here. All right, it's on now. It's nine o'clock, nine thirty. You can't see it, but the tree right out there is completely bent off the side and smashed the car. So yeah, it's um, it is category four. Things are really uh, up over here. So yeah, like I said, the trees are falling off, these cars over here. It's getting crazy. And you can hear it in the trees. The lights keep going off and on in the hotel. Um, we're holed up with a couple of Australian girls and we're just sitting it out right now so everyone's kind of freaking out but uh, we'll see how the next couple hours goes. So I'm wandering the halls by myself right now. They're telling everyone to go back to their rooms. I'm uh, just checking the place out and man, it is no joke. Lights are off everywhere except for the emergency lamps. So, uh, trippy, man. So it's about 11 o'clock at night. They're making everybody go into their rooms now. The wind is really blowing really hard, so I gotta go into my room. See you in a little bit.
So the worst of it's over right now. It's just uh, a little wet and windy right now, but you can see the whole ocean is just completely brown with all the muck that's been washed up. You can see over here the hotel next door to us flattened in the front. It was pretty bad. The town is pretty uh, pretty quiet right now. We're just trying to get a shuttle bus to the airport, but I'm not sure if we're going to make it. But you can see a lot of things behind me. Uh, trees came down, up, got uprooted. These are big palm trees, so it's uh, crazy out here. I really feel bad for the town. I mean, it's, um, it's a lot of damage in the town. A lot of broken windows, a lot of uprooted trees. And this McDonald's I used to go to all the time, completely, completely gutted. So uh, a lot of work to be done here. Probably one of the saddest things uh, is seeing the beach completely destroyed with debris. And right over here is uh, Nikki Beach, Nikki Beach Club, um, and it's completely covered with debris. It got hit pretty hard, so that's pretty tough to see. So it's the first night after the hurricane. Uh, the city's completely dark. Uh, we're one of the few places that actually has power, but every other hotel is blacked out. We um, are looking for ways to get out of the city, but all the airports are shut down and all the flights are canceled, so we'll see. Well, it's day two since the hurricane, and hopefully we'll hear some good news about the airport. I'm not too hopeful, but you never know. But thank God we have a, at least a beautiful sunrise here today, and it's beautiful here in Cabo, so that's good news. We had the military flying around the city for a couple of hours, so we're thinking they're scoping out the place. Hopefully that means some more supplies are going to be coming in. Here's an example of the force of the wind. The uh, post office front got pulled right off its frame, right off that front door. The wind came through that post office and it acted like a sail and just popped it right off. So here is the popular mall in town. It actually had all the shops and uh, a lot of the stores. A lot of um, places to go shopping, and you can see most of it behind me, and the trees are gone. The front of the building is pretty damaged. Um, the sign, which is pretty well known, completely gone back there. So it's another thing that uh, looks like it's going to need a lot of repair. So this is the street where uh, Billigan's and Mango Deck is. You can see a lot of trees are down. I think Billigans is gone in the front. Uh, but the cleanup has begun and people have uh, started to clean up and try to make things back to normal. So this is the front of Billigans and Mango Deck and the office where they used to be. You can see the Billigans and the office are completely gone. You can see here the stairs up to uh, the Casa Dorada took a direct hit and took a beating. They've all been broken off. The sand had been washed out from underneath them and the walls kind of uh, got knocked over. You can see the rebar exposed. This shows you the force of the water and the wind during the hurricane. And you can see all the wiring up there on the, sticking out from the walls. That's where the Casa Dorada sign was. The bolts are still there but the sign's been torn away. You can see a little bit of remnants of a a letter there, but other than that, it's completely gone. This is what's left of the rental place right out in front of Nikki Beach. It's been destroyed except for the posts. And then you can see everything in front of Nikki Beach has just been destroyed. The rocks got mo moved around and forced up next to the stairs. So uh, Nikki Beach looks like it took it probably one of the hardest hit places. This is the inside of Nikki Beach, as you can tell over here. Most of the um, structures are all gone, especially the uh, bar area that's completely taken down. Uh, all the glass is shattered right behind us over here. Um, 
he looks in pretty bad shape, which is unfortunate. This used to be our favorite spot, and uh, looks like they're gonna have to do some rebuilding here. It's pretty sad. So it's Tuesday afternoon, late evening, and it's the second day after the hurricane, and the ocean has gotten back to normal. It's actually really beautiful out there. A lot of the soot has fallen to the bottom. The ocean is blue. There's not a boat or a sailor out there. It's just amazing right now. So we're actually enjoying today. We're just hoping that tomorrow we'll hear some news about the airport. So we're hoping and keeping our fingers crossed. So it's Wednesday, uh, the 17th, I believe, and uh, there's still no word about getting out of here. There's so many rumors flying out. It's crazy. You got rumors that the government's taking people out. Then you have planes flying overhead. You got people going to the airport and being turned back, saying they don't know when they're going to be leaving. And so right now, everybody has everybody has a rumor. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has some thought about how we're going to get out of here, but nothing for sure. So. We're just going to be waiting it out. Um, I'm supposed to be leaving today, but that's not going to happen. So far, the hotel is being really good about it, and uh, we've been taken care of here. We know there's some hotels that have it really bad, so uh, we're fortunate right now. But again, it's just the unknown. So, day three after the hurricane, and here we are still. Brennan and I are deciding to walk down to town a little bit. We heard there's some stuff going on downtown. So we're going to go check it out. The hotel's keeping everybody there, but we just want to see what's happening within the town. So we're going to check it out right now. Hopefully this isn't the last that you hear from us. We'll be fine. One other one. So if you're going to LA, they're probably going to take you to see a walk. Just go party down there and go back home. But, uh, that's what they said. You see down here, it's actually worse than what we thought, because at the hotel you don't get an idea of how bad it is down here. But you can see the Pemex back here, everyone's waiting for gas, and the line is probably about a block and a half long. And then over here at the city, which is kind of like a Costco, people are lined out uh, probably about a block out trying to get water and food. So the situation down here for the locals is actually pretty bad, so it's uh, worse than we thought from the hotel really big difference in the feel of the city today. Yesterday it was relatively calm and people were going about their business, but today is a real sense of desperation. As you can see, people running up and down the streets trying to find food. We ran into a couple of tourists who haven't had food in their hotel room for a while and they're asking us for food. We don't have anything on us, um, but it's really a difference today and it's um, quite striking when you see people in lines, people running back and forth, and there's just a real sense of desperation in the city that you didn't see yesterday. So I think the effects of the hurricane are really starting to come on now as opposed to earlier. So keep you posted. So after walking around most of the morning, talking to different hotels, I guess the plan for the government is to take all the tourists out by military planes, um, probably through San Jose or La Paz. So right now, they're meeting in groups, taking down names, um, where you're from, location, and stuff like that. And we're going to get on a list. From there, we're going to take us probably to a city in Mexico like Tijuana or, or Mazatlan, Acapulco, maybe DF. And uh, from there, we'll have to try and find a ways home. But it looks like the organization has started and evacuation is probably going to go underway sometimes today or maybe tomorrow so we're going to find out right now if our hotel has given us any information
Well, we just got our evacuation orders for tomorrow, so we're leaving at 6.30 Thursday morning to go to the Best Western, and they're gonna, that's a staging ground where then they're going to sign us planes from there and fly us out. So it looks like we're finally getting out of here. It looks like there's probably going to probably be hundreds of people at the airport since all the hotels are evacuating out tomorrow. So stay tuned. Well, it's 6 a.m. Uh, Thursday morning. Behind me is the first group that's being evacuated from our hotel to the airport. Once we're at the hotel, we're going to check in there and then from there fly into Mexico somewhere and then from Mexico back to everyone's homes. Uh, unfortunately, I'm on the next group, so I have to wait till about 10 o'clock, but the evacuation has started. Uh, from this point on, we don't know what's going to happen, so we're crossing our fingers and hoping for the best that we can get out on one of the planes today and hopefully make it back to L.A. by tonight or maybe tomorrow morning. Well, the first set of buses have arrived. This is the first group, the 6 a.m. group that's taking off. And you can see that everyone's ready to go. We'll be the next group to leave. This hotel has been so amazing to the guests. Um, you can see they have box lunches for the guests for the day trip. We don't know how long we're going to be at the airport or what we're going to be doing, but they've been so gracious. They're standing by with all this food for us. They're still taking care of their guests, so this has been an amazing experience just at the hotel. So you can see they're evacuating the families first. We'll buy some stroke of luck. We've been on the fourth bus and it's packed right now. It's, um, you can see they're squeezing all the luggage into the aisles here, trying to get everybody on. It was a crazy mad dash, but we made it. What is usually a, a very busy city with people and right now we'd be sitting in a bunch of traffic is quiet. There's like a haze with a smoke smell hanging in the air. There's a few people walking around the streets, the police are out. Um, lots of damage to the city of San Jose. Um, it, it's actually worse than I thought it would be over here in San Jose, but it looks like they took it pretty hard over here as well. So we finally made it to the airport and we were really fortunate to get on the 6.30 bus because there are thousands and thousands of people. We're supposed to be going over to that Hyatt back there, or Best Western, I'm sorry, to register. But you can see we're pretty far away from it. And this line goes way, way, way back there. So if we were on the 10 o'clock or the 1 o'clock bus, we would have been here in the middle of the day. It would have been sweltering hot. But uh, I think we're going to be fortunate to get on an earlier flight. We're keeping our fingers crossed. Um, the U.S. representative just walked by and said we may be getting on today, so we're keeping our fingers crossed and hoping for the best. So we've been here for about two hours now, and then the line has actually gone from right about where this white van is where we started this morning, and it's now gone all the way back, looks like about a quarter mile almost, to the overpass down there. So all the vans from the different hotels that are be coming after us, they have a long wait today. So behind here is the the Best Western, which is like in the check-in point, and this is where you'll find out where you're going. 
the domestic line, which is right over here for the Mexican nationals, and we're in the international line, and we all kind of converge right there. And then from there, I think they're going to tell us what plane we're going on. So we're hoping that we get a flight that goes into the United States, but we'll know in a few minutes. Actually, we'll probably know in a couple hours. Uh, this line is moving real slow. <laughs> Improvising, making a little bit of a tent and shed for some of the kids that are right around here. They're putting a, a tarp up with caution tape up and uh, stringing it along there. It's a good, a good idea for some of the little kids in the shade over here. So it looks like they brought all the elderly and the children up to this area of the Best Western, the covered area to keep them out of the hot sun. But you can see uh, they're all crowded in the area pretty tight. Uh, there's a little bit of relief, there's a little bit of breeze in the air. It's much better than being out in that hot sun. But uh, everyone has to wait together. So after waiting for about five hours, we've actually finally made it through. This is the crew we've been waiting with for the whole five hours, making it onto the, onto the plane. <laughs> Looks like we're getting on an American plane to uh, L.A. Meal. Meal. Oh. If you're a Southwest customer, thank you. If you're not, you're welcome for the free ride to LA. <laughs> <laughs> right now it's mass pandemonium as everyone's trying to figure out to get to the plane. Some people going to Dallas, some people going to Los Angeles. Everyone's crowding around. Uh, temp tempers are high. Uh, people are getting pretty frazzled trying to get themselves on the plane, but it looks like we're going to make it to ours. So we're on the tarmac right now. We're checking in, about to get on our flight. Pretty happy moment. Time to get on. Actually, it looks like we're home here. Welcome to Los Angeles. Finally made it to LAX. We were so fortunate to actually get a flight directly to LA, and we weren't expecting that at all. So this uh, little trip comes to an end, and uh, it's a trip that I'll never forget. 
an amazing experience and uh, one that will stay with me for a very long time.